I thank uh, the parents available and the parents who are not present as well, wherever you are and you're watching us. Thank you for supporting the young men. I thank the schools for accepting the invitation and for proving that the students actually matter. Because if money mattered more, we would have a very different kind of audience. But this is a sign that you actually care about our children. And we ask Allah Ta'ala to bless every school that is here. Let me thank Muslim Channel for always pioneering things that are very uh, interesting but also very beneficial to our ummah. And I also wish to thank in a special way Dr. Hanifa and the Stepping Stone Foundation. She, she is a mother and she will not rest until she is sure that the future has been secured for uh, all children. I have a very interesting topic to talk about and even more interestingly very little time to address the issue but since we are still here I'm very sure that those who will have questions shall be able to be attended to. I want to begin by uh, challenging the, the term or the terminology boy child. I think it is very Western and I need to anchor my speech in faith and the African tradition. I don't know and uh, there could be other several uh, terminologies to use but I think after observing what is happening here in Africa we do not refer to our young male children as boys especially when we want to interest them in the bigger future. We can use young men because when we call them boys it's not even fun. When you call an African boy or oh man that you are a boy it, it, in many, it is in, in many cases used to belittle them. So you are not boys. You are men but in a smaller sleeve we are yet to see what you can do to this world. So when we say that Boy Child Conference, this is a men's conference. Only that there are people who care about your future that are coming here to address you before you can uh, develop the understanding of the complexities of this world. So kindly don't go back feeling, don't go back home at school feeling like boys. You are men. And the message I'm going to address to you is not for boys, but it is for the men, uh, but younger men. Why? Because in Africa we want to be called men, such that we are reminded of who we are and what we have to do. Having said that, faith and success there is no success without faith and there is no faith without success unfortunately here in Uganda we have been challenged that uh, there was a time where we managed to successfully dissociate between faith and success and that was a very big blunder that we need to correct now Everything that we see outside, Imam, the Imam Abdul Wali that you see right now, and the honorables and the doctors, they ha someone had to believe that they can become something. So it is the world, whatever we see right now comes from the world of the unknown. And they usually say that it is the unknown that helps us understand the known. So, you need to have faith. And where does faith start from? You need to believe in Allah wa ta and your God. And when you believe in Allah, it means that 
you have to understand tawhid and monotheism why because for a man to be successful or the man we wish to have tomorrow is not a man that is confused about their master a man should not be confused who is my master allah tabaraka wa ta'ala who is my father who is my mother who is my teacher disciplined men like we shall talk about them in the next few minutes men should not be confused you should know your elders but how do you know that you begin by understanding allah then you will understand who is commanding you and who is guiding you allah tabaraka wa ta'ala now when you begin by understanding allah tawhid and worshiping none other than allah tabaraka wa ta'ala then you know where you came from I want to tell you something. Many people will tell you that you cannot win without knowing your background. That is very true. But our background goes back to our genesis. If you don't understand Allah, it means you will not understand where you came from. And it is going to become very hard for you to even craft a purpose for yourself. Why? Because you do not know where you came from. If you did, we would have a different person. So when you understand Allah, it helps you understand where you came from. So you are not confused. The very important philosophical questions, you have the answers for them. Who am I? Where did I come from? Why am I here? Where am I going? That all starts by understanding Allah. And you cannot claim to be the leader of tomorrow. A man who is supposed to have a family and have children can't be confused about where they came from, then where they are headed. You have to have that level of clarity. But it all begins by understanding Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala so you can uh, be able to do what? To succeed. Now, how does that help us? When we say that you need to understand God and anchor all your success in your faith, and belief in God it means that you are now going to get rid of the slave mentality I want you to appreciate some of you will understand and I'm not worried sometimes I speak and people don't understand other times I speak and people understand but I can comfort you with something it is not a must for you to understand whatever you study now but you should keep it with you even in Sharia, it is acceptable. Uh, Imam Abdul Wali is a scholar, is a hadith scholar. He knows that we have what we call tahammul and ada. It is acceptable that you, before you, you become a, a grown man, we keep with you hadith and Quran. Not for you to narrate right now, but later when you grow up. So you might need to keep some of the hadiths I'm going to give you such that in the future they can act as a reference why do we need to believe in Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and anchor all our achievements and successes and our goals in our faith because when you believe in Allah you get rid of the slave mentality and you understand that most of our problems in Africa are going to be uh, about decolonization I'm not talking about the rebel the, the, the rebel what you know we have a new president of the <laughs> Uganda Law Society he is teaching us some new terms uh, the rebel lawyers the rego, uh, whatever bar there is there's just new terminologies that is happening but we need to decolonize we have been inheriting a lot of things that came from our colonial master then and people who enslaved us now the one of the benefits of believing in Allah is that you get rid of any form of slavery so you free your mind first because now as a man your master is one everyone else has to be a human being and you will not compromise your values because of them you are not going to worship money. You're not going to worship knowledge. You're not going to worship uh, status and the politics or authority. But 
a, a, an African young man is now free to think because only God is above him and everyone else has to conform to Allah's word. Every other relationship has to conform to Allah's principles and guidelines. And when you start like this, you are going to win because it means that you are not going to compromise or bend as an African man. And this is not in a bad way. We are not teaching you to be arrogant. But you are going to be able to stand confidently and defend what you believe in religion. Secondly, your traditions and cultures here, you stand very confident in your skin. You don't need to bleach. You know these days men also bleach their skins. And I don't know what you're looking for. But you're going to be very comfortable in your skin. You're going to be very comfortable where you are. Also, you are going to love your people. And you're going to fall in love with bigger, uh, a bigger purpose of helping your people come from where they are to where you want them to be. You are now a leader. All this begins by understanding Allah and then dropping the slave mentality. You need to decolonize. You need to think like an African, a Ugandan. Think about our problems here and aspire to solve our challenges here in Uganda. You do that because you are a man of what? A man of God. And then everything else is going to fall in place. And while you are doing that, there is also something that is very important for you to understand as you set out to win. When you understand God and you have dropped the slave mentality, what next is going to be working on your character? Because in Islam, there is no separation. You know, there is an argument, for those who might be interested, there is an argument between, uh, when people are talking about the difference between the Islamic law and conventional law. In Islamic law, morality has an attachment. And uh, the, w what is termed as criminology in, 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 in uh, Islam has a lot to do with the moral, the moral aspects and morality. So we do not separate between the two. You understand that the secular world is going to want to make you drop your values because those are moral issues and they want to convince you that these issues have no space in the criminal world. No, in Islam, when they say that you cannot fornicate, it is both criminal and immoral. There is a connection. And that is why in Sharia we say that at tahrimu tajrim. When Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala say that this is prohibited, that is him criminalizing and considering something as an offense if you do it. Why am I saying that? You cannot be successful without believing that your moral values are so connected to your success. Because without values, and maybe to define values, what I mean by values here, I mean the things you believe to be true. Other people, you might not be able to prove that they are true. Because, for example, when you say that you're lying, you can't claim that lying is 100% bad. Not until you get saved by lying. Eh? You lie and then you're saved. I'm not a Muslim, so they're like, okay, non-Muslims pass. You have lied and you have survived. But lying, by and large, you should believe as a Muslim that lying is what? So some of the things you believe in, especially the things to do with your morality, should not be things you want to compromise. Every other kind of wealth, and I want you to note this, every other kind of wealth, knowledge, uh, property, and many other things that you want to achieve in life have to be anchored in your moral values. Because if you don't do that, then you, you are not successful. Why? Because just imagine a situation where you have a very wealthy person that is not well behaved. You have someone who is very rich, he owns Kampala, but he's very morally uh, inadequate. Will you like that person? 
we have a very big scholar. He studied medicine, he's a philosopher in politics, but he's very ill, what? Mannered. Will you like that person? And right now, at your age, every form of wealth can kill you except for one kind of wealth. And that is your character, the strength in character. You can, I can give you everything I have now as good character. And you can take Hajat Zaitun's character and everyone's character and you will not collapse. But if you take my knowledge and then take Dr. Aruja's knowledge right now, then take uh, Haji's wealth, you cannot manage, but you can manage good morals. You can take in. So how about we focus on accumulating every good value and growing our character at this age such that we lay the foundation for all the success that shall come after. You have to believe that. Because if you don't, then you're going to be a very successful person in one direction but have no foundation. The foundation that you should be working on right now is the foundation of faith in Allah and also growing your character and being very rich morally such that every other form of wealth has a base has a foundation and i cannot stress that enough lastly because i understand we are working uh, uh, against time i want to make a, a proposition which is very difficult i know but in my opinion, it is very necessary for the future. We are preparing you, or you are preparing yourself to face. I want to invite every parent and every school, and each one of you, men of tomorrow, to dedicate your lives to studying religion. We cannot afford to have a future of men who do not understand their religion. It doesn't matter what you want to become. But I want to interest you in studying to have a shared level of religious knowledge. Even if you'll be an engineer. Even if you're going to be a doctor. Even if you're going to be a political scientist. We need the fathers of tomorrow, the bosses of tomorrow, the head teachers of tomorrow. Every Muslim should be able to do it. To have that level, shared level knowledge. And by that I mean at least have a dad, the knowledge of a dad, which is all level in religious studies. At least if you are, alhamdulillah, very good, go for Thanawi. Be a man that knows how to pray, a man that knows his God, a man that knows uh, the fundamentals. Then on top of that, you can build any other form of success. My point is, we cannot afford to have a young man, Muslim man of tomorrow that does not understand God. You will not be able to navigate AI. You will not be able to navigate all the, the comple ideological complexities that are happening. Mara liberalism, mara democracy, mara far right, far left. All these are also religious in nature. Now, how do we ensure that you will not be confused tomorrow as a young man you need to study your religion such that you know what you believe in you know how to distinguish between that is which is the, the falsehood and the what the things that you believe in so my proposition lastly is all of you should pick interest in memorizing the quran all of you should pick interest in understanding your religion at least up to a daddy which is all over othanawi that is the man that we want. It will not uh, hinder any success. It will, however, provide a very firm foundation upon which you will be able to manage the complexities of life. Thank you very much for listening. We would have loved to say more, but in the interest of time, I want to just remind you that that is how we anchor all our success. In what? In faith, because we are Muslim boy child. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.